boobs. Everyone's got an opinion. Put them away. Don't cover them up. Too saggy. Too fake. Don't breastfeed in public. But also, show us your jugs. It's enough to make anyone want to burn their bra. Big time boobs. Should we start by describing our boobs in one word? Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Picasso. <laughs> what so was your word? Mine was uh, Picasso. <laughs> Amazing. Just sort of asunder quite often, sort of up here, down there, but still art. That's beautiful. What about I said you? independent. <laughs> they are. Uh, Living their own life. Sometimes it's their best life. Mm -hmm. Like any good family member, sometimes I love them, sometimes we're mad at each other. Yeah. But they've got their own career trajectory <laughs> and likes and interests. Do they go out on their own or...? Who knows what they get up to when I'm in bed. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> they've been big, they've been small, they've been pert, they've been saggy. They do what they want. Mm. And mine's a little bit like that. I see complicated because sometimes I would just like to be able to take them off for a while. Oh, yeah. yeah, and leave them in a drawer and give my back a break. Mm -hmm. But I like them, I'm fond of them, and grateful that they're healthy. And they've yeah. been very functional, I have to say. Yeah. There's a whole human being out there who survived on them for a year. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I didn't know that I had boobs until I got hit in primary school with the Dolly Parton. Oh. You know how that was like the most common thing to say to someone who had boobs? And I was in primary school, didn't know they were there, probably had half an A cup. So Dolly Parton was very generous. <laughs> but when you're like the first one. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what the? Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's who I am now. The first and only time I wore a strapless dress was my fifth form ball. Suddenly I was like, oh, people are seeing me. <laughs> Something so else, and me. that's going away now. Yeah. Which is quite, yeah, it was quite upsetting, really. There's a story about Eeyore's birthday, and he gets given a broken balloon and an empty honey pot. He has a terrific time putting the flat balloon into the empty honey pot. After I'd finished breastfeeding, that's what they looked like <laughs> when I put them in a bra. I mean, it's good <laughs> to see yourself reflected in literature. It that's is. really important. It is. <laughs> So we've got all these different feelings and stories about our boobs, but how much do we really know about what's going on inside them? All humans start out in the womb with the same kind of chest. We get nipples even before our genitals develop. They're a standard feature, a bit like headlights on a car. Then at puberty, about half of us start producing estrogen and our breasts change and grow. On the outside, the nipple gets bigger and the areola gets more obvious. On the inside, we grow fatty tissue, that determines size, and connective tissue, that determines shape. Nestled into all this fatty goodness is the milk-producing apparatus, organised into sections called lobes. Within each lobe are smaller structures, called lobules. When feeding a newborn, milk flows from the lobules through a network of ducts until the milk is released through the nipple, like a shower head. And breasts are not just business, they're also pleasure. The nipple, in fact the whole breast, is rich with sensory tissue, which is a G-rated way of saying touching boobs the right way leads to X-rated good times. So if that's the incredible miracle of what goes on inside the humble breast, why is it that what's on the outside makes people so offended slash horny slash angry? Oh, I think I can explain that. These are my boobs. Not my actual boobs. If I showed you those, not everyone would be able to watch this video. These look like boobs, but they're made of plastic. So they're fine. Let's find out how much boob is okay. Apparently. Day wear. Evening wear. Beach wear. Slutty. Stripper. Burlesque. Modest. Uptight. Good healthy fun. Man-hating feminist. Banned from Facebook. So 
side note, why is it called breastfeeding? Shouldn't it be called baby feeding with a focus on who's being fed rather than the delivery system? Like when we eat dinner, it's not called plate feeding, is it? Anywho, it's also about ages and stages. So this was okay when I was two years old, yep, and, and four, maybe six, but by the time I'm eight, no. But he's still okay. Yeah, still okay. Sure, yeah, no, he's good. Yeah, terrific, still great. Good for him, yeah, fab. Ah. I don't want to make my point, but could we please stop being a boob about boobs? <gasps> Thank well, you. Hey, here's the thing I didn't quite understand. It's not actually against the law to go topless, but you can be reported and fined $200 for being obscene, indecent, and disorderly. Right. If someone thinks it's offensive. Knocking things over. Yeah, I think if, you, if they're actually fighting with each other, that's disorderly conduct. <laughs> not... What is the process for that? Like, how do you deem... Is it just anybody? Yeah. Anybody yeah. anywhere can call, call up boobs. The boob police. Yeah, if you oh, went down Andrew to... boobs, yes, make me mad. Exactly what it com. Yeah. It's yeah. a phone right. line a and a ticket. website. Yeah. <laughs> so, not only do we have to keep them covered up, we have to spend most of our adult life literally wearing wire booby traps. Mm -hmm. That cost way too much money. Yes. Yeah. Hey, you know what time it is? It's time for a bra rant. Bra, bra rant, bra rant, bra rant, bra rant, bra rant. Why is it that the most aesthetically pleasing bras are made for people who have basically no boobage and don't actually really need a bra, and people who really need some structure and support get the ugliest thing that look like the mammarian equivalent of all the pedic shoes? Bra and why is it that even though the bra industry is worth $30 billion, every bra I own, after a month, the underwire weasels its way out and tries to stab me in the heart? E -o, e -o. Bra rent. And why is it that no brands make a bra with a different cup size on either side just in case, hypothetically, that's something that we might need at a certain time of the month? And the rest of the month. Bra rent. Why those stupid little bows and dangly charms <sighs> in between your boobs? I don't want a little shiny heart dicking around on the front of my... What's it? Bra rent. Why don't nude bras come in more nah. colours? Not all of us are a peachy pink. Bra rent. And why is it that trying to find your bra size is like trying to solve the Enigma code? Ah. <gasps> 8G is a 12D here. Carry the one. Uh. Long division. Uh. And then it's $65. Ugh. Bra rent. What the fuck is a... Face bra, and why do the ads keep targeting me on Facebook? Bra rent. So yes, we have had like a little bit to moan about this episode, a little bit. But it's important that we acknowledge that even being born with the body parts that fit your gender identity is a privilege, and it's not always the case for everyone. True. I'm going to let these three explain more. Tatas is one of the things I call my chest. If I'm referring to the whole area, it's just chest. Chest works well. Um, sometimes pecs. Sometimes. Yeah, they're called babies, they're my babies. Um, all the girls. Boobs. <laughs> That's about it, really. Hello, I'm George Fowler. I'm a transgender man, but most people know me best as this, which is Hugo Girl, who is a drag king. Hi, I'm Lexi. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm an academic. I'm transgender. Um, yeah, that's... That's me. Kia ora, my name is Ramon Tawake. I am 43 years old. I am a trans woman. Growing up, I had a complex relationship to my body in general. Puberty was like a really scary time. But I would get, have, get out of the shower and I would look at myself in the mirror and it was always a hint of, well, what's that? And the further down my body I got, the more it was, what's that? I was completely devastated and disappointed. Um, because, you know, I didn't develop bosoms. I would resort to, like, bras and then stuffing bras, like I think a lot of people can relate to in general. I got this, like, spacey, faraway feeling, like I wasn't, wasn't connected with what was happening at all. It's a bit like living in a hotel room, having the wrong body. You're in a hotel room and you don't know what it's like to actually live in your own home. I was a showgirl from, like, 16, 17. There was a trio of us and we were performing a group called Pure Funk and they were obsessed with big... Kahunas, so these would like. So we used to have like uh, 
socks, this is gonna be so embarrassing, um, with condoms in them filled with water. So that would give us sort of big bouncy boobs. And they would do things like slide up and down the floor and I'm thinking, bitch, they are so gonna pop. But it wasn't until I started taking hormones um, that I developed boobs naturally. So I took these two little blue pills. Anything? No. Still this hairy, flat sort of thing. And I forgot about it. Putting on like male contour for the first time and taping for the first time and just having this like, <gasps> holy shit. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is beautiful. This is great. The body is not angular anymore. The shape has changed. My hips have changed and there are breasts. And honestly, I just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. Suddenly, I was authentic. I was looking at my house as opposed to my hotel room. My flatmate, she's divine. She's like lace and everything's like really pretty and matching and like, mm, and I'm like, oh, it's so much effort. But you know, I'm just like, oh, I've had a bra for three years. <laughs> This will do fine. <laughs> Push the girls up, I'm out. Daily I uh, wear a binder. Wish I washed this. It literally just flattens everything out and you kind of like hoik your tits to the side into your armpits under it so it, it kind of sits like up here um, and it does a pretty, pretty bloody good job under a thick black t-shirt. A binder is not comfortable to wear. Uh, uh, my back is fucked. You're constricting all this area so your back muscles get lazy. Isn't that nuts? Interesting story. I never knew that trans women were susceptible to breast cancer. Now that might sound like a really dumb thing to say or think, but um, I don't think that. And I also realise that men can get breast cancer as well. When you get the letter saying you've got to go and have a mammogram, um, that's another, it's like getting another birth certificate to be able to do that. Oh man, I go on and buy the weirdest shit from Bunnings. So. I'm looking for something, like, you know, because it has to be like sweat resistant. So when I take this off, sweat will just fall out of it. Isn't that, ugh, it's disgusting, it'll go And he'd be like, what is this for? I'd be like, um, an art project? I'm fairly sure he thought it was just sex. My friend owns a bar um, and he quite often would ring me and say to me, you've got two bras here. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, how did that happen? Why is there two? I don't know. I don't know. There's just people relate to their bodies in all different sorts of ways. For trans people, that's much harder. You know, you're transgressing the big weird line in the sand called gender. Like, that's a really big social move. I wish that we talked about our bodies more as trans women and trans men as trans people, uh, or we're given the space to talk about our bodies more. For me, I'm proud of the fact that they are mine. They are mine and I grew them myself. Um, they are nearly 20 years old, so they've got through their teenage years. <laughs> That's incredibly powerful uh, and a delight to be able to look in the mirror and go, this is me. This is me. The journey has been worth it. Amazing. That was amazing. Phenomenal humans. Thank you so much, Roman and George and Lexi. And if anyone out there has any questions about your gender identity, you can call Outline NZ and have a chat. So breast or chest health is really important, right? And we all have to do stuff to keep an eye on what is going on with our upstairs bits and pieces, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. I like to call it. Mm -hmm. I think it's like you're supposed to start at 20. Mm. and know you're normal, so you start checking then. I am very late to the party. But I know that it's something about fingertips. Yes. The armpit to sternum, I believe. The chest area you have to check is larger than you think. Oh, true. It's like you've got to go uphill, down, dale. <laughs> right Oh, Yeah. When they get sore around my period, I go, oh, that's sore. Oh, that's sore. And just, like, keep prodding to be sure that it still hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, you get just like a little bit obsessed, like, is it really sore? Oh, Dang it's in. sore. Really sore. And I'm like, well, I'm here. Nah, no lumps. I do a check in the shower and I also like to do them at restaurants. Just between the entree and the main. It helps to remind everybody else that they need to do yeah, that's that. That's just right? responsible. Oh, I think it's And then you safe. get your $200 fine. That's the one. You can also get a close personal friend to do it for you. Apparently that's often the way lumps are discovered. Great if you're just lazy. Mm. Yeah. Can you do it? I'm tired. Michelle, this is a McDonald's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I have a question. Yes. What is it like to get a mammogram? It's not painful, it's uncomfortable because there's yeah. a squish that way and you get a squish that way. Oh, a double squish. Yeah. yeah. The machine always feels like it's made for somebody much taller than me, even though it does go up and down. <laughs> and sometimes you feel like you're being lifted off the ground yeah. by it. I do... <laughs> Picked up by the boobs. <laughs> I do really strongly feel that if men had mammograms as often as women do, there would be a much nicer machine made. And you probably get the day off. Probably. You know, and a, yeah, and a medal. And a beer. <laughs> well, and a pay rise. Yeah. Oh, One of these. <laughs> Let's not forget. <laughs> but it is important to do, of course, even if it is unpleasant. It's uncomfortable, but not as uncomfortable as cancer. True. Well, that brings us to the end of our episode where societal constructs are entirely made up and showing your nipples doesn't actually matter. Now, if you don't mind, we've got an appointment on Takapuna Beach. Woo! See you next month. Hey, there, Marama. Scope, taking the girls. <laughs> <laughs>